My question is, which hand will you use to hammer down a nail? Which leg would you use to do a fouette if you're a ballet dancer? While you're thinking it over, a true ambidextrous person will say that it doesn't make any difference, and they won't be bragging. In fact, for ambidextrous people, it doesn't make any difference which leg or hand they use. Both sides of their body are equally developed. But how is that possible? It's known that right-handedness or left-handedness depends on the asymmetry of your brain. If the left hemisphere dominates, you are right-handed, and vice versa. In ambidextrous people, this asymmetry is not so clearly defined. That's why the sides of their body are equally efficient. Yet these unique people for whom it doesn't matter which hand, leg, and even paired organ, hearing, or eyesight they use are really rare. Ambidextrous people are, for the most part, able to use both their hands and legs with equal skill, which is no less unique, in fact. The participants of our program today, Anna Adintsova, Tatiana Shishkova, and Vasily Kaskianov, are sure that to become ambidextrous, you don't need to be born ambidextrous. This ability can be successfully developed. They are ready to prove it to our CAPSIS jury right now. By the way, today, on our jury, Maria Nazarova is a candidate of Medical Science Junior Research Associate at the Center for Neuroeconomics and Cognitive Research at the Higher School of Economics. Patrizia Ratmanova is a PhD in Biology, Leading Research Associate in the Department of Higher Nervous Activity of the Biology Faculty at Moscow State University. Alexander Kaplan is Doctor of Science in Biology, Psychophysiologist, Professor in the Department of Human and Animal Psychology on the Biology Faculty at Moscow State University. All three participants claim that they are able to use both sides of their body with equal skill but our experts won't take the word for it. In order to find out to what extent our participants are ambidextrous, if they are at all, the jury decided to set up a series of tests. Hello, dear participants. Hello. 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 Well, to check which hand is more skillful, we'll now carry out a series of tests to find out whether you use both hands with equal skill or whether, in some cases, you prefer to use your right or left hand. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Turn to us with your right side, please. All of you. Close your eyes. Arms should hang down freely. Relax. Now raise both arms shoulder high and keep them like that. This is one of the classical tests to check which arm is dominant. The one which is higher is most likely to be dominant. Okay, it seems Anna's right hand is a bit lower. Vasily's left arm is a bit lower. As for Tatiana, maybe her left arm is a little bit lower. To find out which eye, right or left, is dominant, the experts ask the participants to hold a toy gun and try to take aim in turns. The study shows that unlike truly ambidextrous people, our participants really care which eye they use to take aim. For each of them, one eye turned out to be dominant. Now we'll carry out another test to find out if there is any difference in perceiving audio signals. We'll check if one ear is dominant. You can see phones on our table. Let's wait. Come here, please, and pick up the phone. Yes. Pay attention to what ear our participants hold the phone to when answering. Apparently, this is the dominant one. Apparently is the key word here. In fact, these three tests don't allow us to conclude if our participants are ambidextrous. That's why our experts carried out another series of tests to define each person's dominant hand, leg, eye, and ear. We'll now see the results. Judging by the asymmetry of the right and the left hands, we can see that Anna is distinctively left-handed. In nine out of 20 tests we carried out, you used your left hand, 
and only in three your right hand. Other tests show that it doesn't make any difference to you which hand you use. As for Vasily, he doesn't have a dominant hand, so in terms of his hands, he's ambidextrous. As for your legs, your left leg is obviously dominant. Concerning your eyes, your right eye is surely dominant. You already said that yourself. Well, we have one more participant, Tatiana. She's taken all the tests as well. And in the tests aim at determining the dominant arm, she proved obviously ambidextrous. In eight tests out of 20, you used your right arm. In seven out of 20, you used your left arm. And in other tests, we couldn't say which arm was dominant. We calculated the coefficient and it shows that you fall into the category of ambidextrous people. Is it possible that only two out of three have this unique ability? Anna strongly disagrees with that, despite the fact that the tests show she has no potential of becoming ambidextrous. Anna is not discouraged. On the contrary, she's even more willing to prove she has the right to be here today. Hello, my name is Anna Odintsova. I'm 30 and I live in Moscow. When I was a child, I never thought of whether I was right or left-handed. I just did everything in the way which seemed most comfortable to me. Probably for this reason, when in primary school, Anna, from time to time, expressed the desire to write not only with her right hand, but with her left hand as well. However, her teachers and parents didn't want Anna to stand out from the crowd and insisted on her writing with her right hand. She had to forget about her unusual abilities for a long time. But at the age of 20, Anna broke her right hand as the result of an accident. Not wanting to fall behind in her classes, she started taking notes with her left hand, and she could do it well almost at once. After that, I started wondering if I was able to write with my right hand in the mirror's reflection. I didn't come across any difficulty, and I managed to do that in various ways. I started experimenting, I got really excited, and I started to draw the reflection of a mirror back to back, to the one side, to the other side, in turn, at the same time, in different ways. And yes, I like the process itself. Today, Anna believes she's ambidextrous, and she keeps discovering new ways to use the left and right sides of her body with equal skill. In fact, I'd like to demonstrate that I could use my hands in different ways at the same time. Yes, in order to do this, I will paint different masks on different people's faces, even people of different sexes. Well, let's see how you manage that. Anna has long been doing face painting, and of course, she often uses both her hands in her work, but she's never had to do different face painting masks at the same time. Look at how many small things Anna has to keep in mind. But hard as this task may seem, Anna is working quite quickly and efficiently. Anna, thank you very much for this performance. We really enjoyed it. Could you tell us what masks we have on the left side and on the right side? What animals did you want to draw? Oh, on the right I wanted to paint a tiger. I hope I managed to. And on the left, I wanted to paint a kitty. In your opinion, which mask is more difficult? They're equally difficult. The difficulty is not in the mask itself. It was difficult to paint different masks using both hands at the same time. What's the reason for the tiger being painted in half while the cat, the cat is fully painted? Why is that? You decided to paint the half mask on the right side of the face? Do you always do that or do you paint both ways? It's just that I not only like full masks, I love half masks. I use them in, in my portfolio for my work. So I wanted to be original to show what a half mask looks like. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. To this end, we need a reassuring phrase, I think. Sometimes like this and sometimes like that. In this case, it could have been more convenient to paint on this side but I don't know. I saw it this way because of the face type. This gives me an idea. The thing is that I'm a researcher. Yes. That's why I always want to measure things. You see, while you were working, I was taking some measurements. What did I measure? I found out, I saw that it is often as follows. 
You go on painting on one face, while on the other face, your hand stops, and vice versa. I started noting down these moments when you stopped here or there. As a result, your hands always, well, 70% of the time, they work in turns, especially when it was difficult. You stopped using one hand and use the other, and vice versa. Why was that? What was the reason for it? Well, in fact, I don't monitor the process itself. I keep two pictures in my head and remember the stages of painting the masks. I mean, I always remember on which mask and at what moment I stopped. So if something needs to be added or if I see the paint is spread unevenly, I analyze the failure, so to say, and compensate them. But I keep both pictures in my head at the same time. So it turns out that, you said it yourself, that you shift your attention from one face to the other, but… Yes, right, I keep them in my head. Yes, I agree that you keep them in your head, but do you keep them in your hands? So they kind of fall to pieces. You use one hand first and then the other one. It seems Alexander was not very impressed by Anna's abilities. To dispel the jury's doubts, our participant decided to perform an almost acrobatic trick. She will write with her feet, right and left at the same time. Anna is so confident, she suggested that experts choose any text. We discussed it and decided it would be, man was created to be happy, just like the bird was created to fly. Maybe the first fragment, at least. The beginning, yes, I agree. Man was created to be happy. It's needless to say that writing with your feet is really hard. By the way, what you now see is Anna's fourth attempt to write with her feet. But look at her go. It's really memorable. Let's see what our experts have to say. Great. Yes, bravo, bravo. That was great. Anna, could you tell us, when you write, you keep letters in your head in the form of separate images? You keep them in your head from the start, yes? But same as the face painting, I keep them in my head in the form of an integral picture. I mean, I can write different letters in one sentence or different sentences at the same time. On two lines. It seems Anna has finally managed to convince the experts of the fact that she has unique abilities. But we'll find out later if she is the best. For now, let's welcome the next participant. My name is Tatiana Shiskova. I'm 33. I live in Moscow, and I think I'm ambidextrous. I started trying to write with my left hand long ago in school, but it happened to be that the teachers told me to use my right hand. That was decided very quickly, and I gave in. In spite of the fact that throughout her childhood, Tatiana was made to use her right hand, she continued using her left hand without paying attention to it. At drawing classes, arts and crafts, or simply doing domestic chores, the older she got, the more distinct was her desire to use the left hand. And at the same point, Tatiana stopped fighting with that. Today, Tatiana can do almost all everyday activities with her left hand with equal skill. Use scissors or a knife, do her nails, draw, or even embroider. In my everyday life, I have no problem using it. I learned to play some percussion. I always wanted to play knackers, and I managed to learn. I can work with both left and right hands at the same time. I can write using both hands at the same time. I mean, it's easy for me to write with both hands at the same time. When my left hand is writing on its own, it gets a bit slower. When both hands are writing in different directions, for some reason my right hand gets slower, but not the left. All in all, I take note of everything. It's very exciting. Hello. Hello. Tatiana, tell us what skill you're going to show us. I'd like to show you that I can write with both hands at the same time in different directions. Horizontally, vertically, and in parallel as well. By way of illustration, I'll divide the board into several areas to have space to write. 
Here, I'll write vertically. And here, horizontally. Yes, give me some phrases made up of three, four, or five words. They may be different in each task. That's up to you. Uh, beauty will save the world. Beauty will save the world. Great. Well, let's simply try to write it top down, for example. Yes. By the way, you can choose if my left hand is to write in mirror reflection to the right or in parallel. It can be done either way. Let's do it in parallel. In parallel. Okay, let's go. The ease and at the same time the speed are truly amazing. Tatiana is doing this with both hands simultaneously. But wasn't she getting ahead of herself trying to impress our experts? Great. Yes. No mistakes. Well, no. The letter A. Here it is. Yes, there are. The letter A. Yes, yes. And another letter in the second word. Right, right. Oh, I really miss the letter A. Yes, uh-huh. Well, shall we give her the next phrase? This time, Tatiana will have to write the phrase, let the sun always shine. She is to write with her right hand in the way she used to, from left to right, while her left hand is to write the same phrase in mirror reflections. Well, the left coped with the task perfectly. Great. We can see that, yes. Can I look at what your right hand has written? Sure. Here's the right hand. Yes, but in my opinion, the writing with your left hand seems neater, looking from this side. Yes, I I feel more comfortable doing this very exercise with my left hand. I don't know why. Well, fine. I can see a lot of cursive handwriting, which demonstrates... Well, here it's print, right? So, in many places, the letters are written joined together. That's important, yes. Tatiana, we decided to make the task more difficult for you. We'll give you two different sentences, and you have to write them with your right hand and your left hand. The sentences will be different, yes. The left hand will write, hello everyone, and it is to be written in a way that we can read, while the right hand will write, I can. So that you can see it as well? With the exclamation mark. If possible, yes, fine. Okay. And again, Tatiana copes with this task easily. It's clear that Tatiana's ability to write with both hands at the same time in different directions is well developed. Great, especially the exclamation mark, yes. Well, everything is clear, yes. And cursive handwriting, again, this is, this is automatic. You write automatically. Yes, frankly speaking, I... Yes, yes, looks like it. Yes, you just need to switch your attention from one to the other. Had to stop and remember the next word. How do you explain this ability? Did it just appear at some point, or did you study it? I think I've always had it, but... At some point, you discovered you could easily... Well, I didn't use it right. I tried and understood that I could. Yes, thank you. Tatiana managed to convince us that she can use her right and left hands with equal skill. But our experts have decided to go on to check how skillfully she can use not only both hands, but both legs at the same time. This will be an improvisation. Though I'm a professional musician, I am a singer. I've never played them a telephone in my life, frankly speaking. Yes. But now I will try to play this percussion instrument. It's called a shaker. It will... It will set the pace in some rhythm. I will take a stick and play the metallophone with my right hand. Like that. And my legs will help me not lose pace. So that the pace is more or less constant. One, two, three, four. It should be noted that in this task, Tatiana is not demonstrating her vocal or performing skills, only her ability to make different moves with her hands and legs at the same time. And to this end, a simple melody and a kid's metallophone to accompany it will do perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Like that. Great, lifts your mood. Thank you very much. 
Should I play something else? <laughs> well, only if you try to switch hands. To switch hands. Yes. That was interesting and convincing. Thank you for giving me this task. Yes, that was wonderful. My name is Vasily Kasyanov. I live in Moscow. I'm 36. Unlike the previous participants, Vasily was a 100% right-hander since childhood, and he felt okay with that. But 10 years ago, he decided to develop his left hand out of sheer curiosity. By the way, at that time, he couldn't even hold a pen with his left hand. The harder he trained, the more obvious was this final aim, to be able to use his left and right hands with equal skill, with equal efficiency and dexterity. The first year, I practiced for no less than several hours a day, and one day, I signed my name with my left hand without thinking about it, absolutely automatically, because at that moment, I was holding something in my right hand, and only after I left the shop did I realize that I had signed with my left hand, like that. Well, that was exciting because your signature is kind of identification. Well, the feeling was no less exciting as well. It feels like, like something really special, a feeling of freedom. The fact that my left hand, it contacts with the world the same way as my right hand. Many years of practice have resulted in Vasily not only having mastered both hands with equal skill, he's become truly ambidextrous. This was confirmed by the results of the test of the scientist carried out at the beginning of the program. Let's see if Vasily's learned phenomenal ability will stand the challenge. As far as I understand, you'll now show us how you can use both hands to write several phrases at the same time, right? Yes, absolutely right. Well, I think I'll start with various patterns just to show you what I can do. Okay, let's start with patterns. With both hands at the same time. Yes, a pattern like that, for example. This is a special exercise I use in my classes sometimes. Yes, this goes in one direction, right? Like that. And this one goes in the other direction. Could you do that in different directions? I can. Well, that's like a butterfly. You draw it from the center, and then you can draw it in the direction of the center. I'll show you. Like that, towards the center, of course. Okay, could you draw a mirror-like pattern using one hand? Well, I can write in mirror reflection, like that. And the other hand, in turns? I can write in mirror reflection in both directions. You mean in this direction and in that direction, right? Well, to make it symmetrical, so to speak, right? And continue here like this. We've seen patterns already. Let's see how you can write text. Let's start with a long sentence. Positive as well. A smile makes a day better. Okay, how am I supposed to do that? Try to write it with both hands. No, let's not write in the converging way. Yes, yes, we can do it like that, okay? Great. Perfect. Is it legible? Yes, both the text written with the right hand. I'm sorry for my handwriting, but both hands are. And the text written with the left hand are legible. And now let's try to write words towards each other. Get ready, you'll have two lines, yes, but for starters, let's write one word. Phenomenal. The title of the program. In such a way so that your hands meet in the center. Is there enough space? Oh, this way? Yes, right. A 
Are we going to try and make them divergent? What word? Well, yes, like that. I mean, if we do it this way, right? No, no, like that. Could you write TV channel on one line and Nauka on the third line? We'll okay, have yes. phenomenal TV channel. No matter the variance of the text, our experts suggested Vasily coped with all of the tasks quite easily. He even fulfilled Alexander Copland's personal request and showed several ways to sketch a five-pointed star, with both hands simultaneously, of course. Vasily, is there anything else you can show us to prove that you can use your right and left hands with equal skill? Yes, sure. I'll show you true manual dexterity with both hands, so to speak. Are you going to show us a trick? Well, I've already demonstrated some fine motor skills, and now you'll see big movements with both hands. There's something about it. Probably the juggling skills Vasily is demonstrating won't be appreciated by professionals. However, our experts are evaluating to what extent his right hand and left hand are equally dexterous in juggling tennis balls. I can show you something else. Yes, go on. I need to stand closer to the wall then. Okay, fine. There is another exercise which is to develop the motor function of both hands so that they simultaneously, well, so that the right and the left hand are equally developed. The same dexterity. Yes, yes, thank you. For the average person, it's unusual, of course. I don't think any one of us could repeat that. How long did you train to do that? That Well, you know, with, with the balls, it was fine from the start when I was more or less in control of the left part of my body. Yes, the movement of my left hand and the right leg at the same time. It worked itself out. I tried to do that, and I managed at once. Thank you, Vasily, yes. Thank you very much. So our program's participants have shown everything they are capable of. And now it's time to find out who the experts consider the best, whose abilities will be recognized as phenomenal from a scientific point of view. Well, we saw that a person can develop the ability to use their second hand outside of their professional sphere in a year. I mean, Vasily demonstrated the ability to use both hands, though his professional activity is not related to it, as far as I understand. What did the test show? That he's ambidextrous in terms of his hands. No hand is dominant. Yes, yes, right. Yes, I mean, the results of 20 tests show that. Vasily falls into the category of ambidextrous people, yet he says he used to be a real right-hander in the beginning. Uh-huh. Yes, these are the phenomenal abilities of the human body and brain. Even if you are right-handed by nature, you can become ambidextrous. Vasily tried to use his left hand with the same skill as his right hand. It turns out that ambidextrous by nature, well, probably Tatiana is the closest to it according to the tests, right? Yes, the tests show that she is ambidextrous. Do you think that she is ambidextrous by nature? Yes, that's right. That's possible, especially because she did a lot of tests with her right and left hands. Yes. Though, no, maybe I won't agree with that, as she chose which hand in some cases, and there were not so many tests where no hand was dominant. So that may be the result of practicing, which in time... Yes, yes, this may be to some extent connected with her professional activity. At least she demonstrated. Well, she played metallophone and stomped her feet. Well, that was really... Well, we know that Tatiana doesn't train this skill. She discovered it and just started using her skills. Maybe that's closer to innate skill. Yes, but still, Tatiana showed a unique ability, but we can't call it phenomenal. No way. Yes, and it should be noted that Anna performs these simultaneous actions, switching between her hands very quickly. Uh-huh. 
Not spontaneously, but switching your attention every time. But, but this is unique. These are unique abilities for an ordinary person. Yet I think that the most interesting object of scientific studies, so to speak, is Anna. The basic tests show that she is left-handed, but she manages to use both her hands with equal skill, at least in writing. She's able to write in mirror reflection in different directions and so on. That's why I think she's interesting from a scientific point of view. Yes, yeah, she controls everything with her eyes. It's clear which eye is dominant. The right eye is dominant. So, to be able to control her hands, she needs to switch very quickly. By the way, the right eye is dominant, so we see some asymmetry here, yes. Well, you see, a profound study with registration, yes, for instance, brain activity, this or that activity, would be interesting. So, should Anna undergo a scientific study? Yes, at a well-equipped scientific laboratory. That would be interesting. Yes. Both for us and for Anna herself, I guess. Yes, I think that. She might be interested in learning more about herself. We'll see. We'll be waiting for her in the laboratory tomorrow. That's what our experts have decided. Obvious leaders don't always get to the finale. Or those with innate, extraordinary ability. Sometimes our jury gets interested in unusual people who manage to develop their phenomenal abilities against all odds. So is Anna ambidextrous or just a virtuous left-hander? To find out about the nature of Anna's unique abilities, we went to the Center of Cognitive Research at the Higher School of Economics. Here, under the guidance of candidate of medical sciences, Maria Nazarova, Anna will take part in a procedure known as transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS for short. In fact, this study is harmless and does not imply any invasion. But the TMS is a very precise method. It allows them to assess the state of brain areas with a higher degree of certainty. With the help of this study, Maria is going to find out which hemisphere of Anna's brain is dominant, the right, the left, or is asymmetry not so prevalent? Well, we'll now try to make it so that your head, your real head is superimposed on the image we have in our system. We don't have an individual MRI of your brain. I mean your real brain. We have an image of an average brain and the system can stretch it to some extent in accordance with specific features of your skull. Let's try to adjust it to your individual characteristics to the fullest extent. The idea of TMS is that with the help of a special device, a highly intensive electromagnetic impulse will be sent to definite parts of Anna's brain. The cells of the cortex will activate and we'll see the motor response. The muscles on which they are now placing sensors will contract. Maria will see the intensity of this muscular response with the help of electrobiography, an electrodiagnostic medicine technique for evaluating and recording the electrical activity produced by muscles. Okay, Anna, we'll now try to correlate your brain uh -huh. with the coordinate space we will need to inform the system of where certain parts of your face, head, and ear are located. Okay, move a bit, please. And a bit more. A bit more, well, fine. I'm just choosing some points in your head to have a better head model. Uh-huh. Now that we've introduced all the basic parameters of Anna's brain into the program, we can start. And a look what we're going to do now. First, I'll try to find the so-called hot spot. Uh-huh. That's the area where the muscle with the electrode is located. 
In our case, the muscle which moves the thumb will respond. I will give stimulation to several points with the same intensity. I'll find out where the response is most intensive. And then we'll stop there and we'll be looking for what we need to find today, the threshold. Uh -huh. The threshold of these motor responses. When I stimulate the brain, the muscle responds. Now relax. Uh -huh. Relax to the fullest extent. Look at the electromyography. Everything must be relaxed. Yes. Maria, could you make it that we have fewer seconds? Change the scale? Okay. So we'll now look for what we've discussed, the hot spot. I guess we should start with the left hand, the right hemisphere. Tell me when you feel something in your hand. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, I do. Aha, we should have a response from the left hand. Yes, that's what we see. Despite the fact that the TMS procedure is painless in general, the impulses sent are felt on a physical level. It's like a discharge of static electricity. What's the response, Maria? Here. 150. Wow, we need a bit more. 200. 200. Aha, that was a good response. What was the response? Uh-huh. Oh, we have 400. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, Anna will now do the same. Well, we'll stimulate the left hemisphere, and the right hand will respond. The task will be the same. Relax, don't think of anything. Keep your eyes open, but don't fall asleep. I know, it's difficult. Relax. How much? 120. Super! How much? Relax your hand and the left as well. Anna, left. Aha, great. The study lasted about an hour and finally Maria is ready to give her conclusion. Turns out that Anna's left excitable area responds better. It happens in right-handers. And the difference is quite big. Of course, when a lot of people are looking at you, well, it's not a real experiment. However, in fact, the difference is quite big. Usually, right-handers have lower thresholds for the left hemisphere. I mean, the cortex which is connected with the right hand usually reacts better. And that's your case. It's usually vice versa for left-handers. It seems that this conclusion surprised both Anna and our expert Maria. Let me remind you that as a result of the series of behavioral tests, which were carried out in the studio yesterday, Anna showed herself as a left-hander. Then she proved she is ambidextrous. And the TMS showed she's a right-hander. What can we make of this controversial result? Well, this is a really difficult case. According to behavioral tests, Anna is left-handed. According to the scale with which she uses her hands, she's ambidextrous. And the TMS shows that her right hemisphere is dominant. What else can we do? We talked with Anna, we're now studying the interhemisphere inhibition. We can see the interaction between the two hemispheres. But as for dominant hands, usually we rely on tests in this respect. We could also have another series of tests. For example, well, to see the result. It's really difficult to say. Anna is a very interesting example of how dominance in different hands may look. Well, that's another unique case in our program. Apparently, this is the first time when the scientific examination failed to clarify the nature of our participants' abilities, but only left us even more confused. The mystery of Anna's phenomenal abilities remains unsolved. 
However, Anna herself doesn't look disappointed with the fact that she's a right-handed, left-handed, and ambidextrous at the same time. I guess I like this feeling of mystery, so to speak. This veil is something unclear. If they told me, for instance, if they told me for sure that I'm ambidextrous or right-handed or left-handed, that would add some modernity, so to speak, to my life. I'm not sure that would make me happier or add some necessary certainty. I guess I haven't come here for certainty, generally speaking. I've come to understand. That's what I got, in fact. I'm even glad that it's so all uncertain. As I hope that maybe, I don't know what. I don't want some diagnosis, frankly speaking. Diagnosis? No. We're not in some hospital after all. Yes. And I'd like to hope that maybe it's not all like that. That maybe I have made something up myself. Or on the contrary, I love the potential abilities that this lack of clarity gives us. That's why I personally am very happy. So it's fine. Thank you.